Hi friends, welcome to another project. This is an AC to DC power supply. Let me show it up closely. Here is the input terminal for the mains AC voltage, could be in the range of 85 to 260 volts DC. And you can get 5 volts DC from this USB Type-C connector. Do you see that? It can handle up to 2 amps continuously and 2.5 amps for a short time, maybe 2 or 3 minutes. Let me explain the board. As I said, here is the input terminal. This one is a fuse, value store, a common mode chalk, X2 rated capacitor for noise reduction, and this small component is a bridge rectifier. And this is the main capacitor for ripple reduction. These three components belong to the snubber circuit, and here is the switching uh, chip. This is an optocoupler to provide an interface for the chip to sense the output voltage and stabilize the output voltage. And here is the transformer, and I used an E-type transformer with a ferrite core, of course. This diode, this inductor, and these capacitors are for noise reduction and belongs to the output rectification and noise reduction circuit. You can adjust the output voltage precisely using this potentiometer precisely on 5 volts. And this LED indicates the proper sub output supply or proper, proper output voltage. Here is the back side. As you see, I have used almost a solid ground plane for the back side except for this track. Don't worry about these modifications because this is the first prototype and the final revision of the PCB board is just fine. You can see the isolation gaps here to follow the IPC standard standards and you can see the input tracks and input circuits. I think I covered most of the points. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. Just stay tuned. All right, here is the homepage of Altium Designer because I designed the schematic and PCB using this CAD software. However, if you don't have the Altium on your computer, you don't need to use a cracked version. Just follow this link in my YouTube video description and activate your free legal license. That license allows you to use a full version of this software, which of course includes Altium 365. Anyway, let's go to the schematic. Here is the schematic diagram. Okay. And this one is the PCB layout. Let's go to the schematic. Here is the AC input fuse, value store, capacitor, common mode chalk, bridge rectifier. You know, I can explain the schematic here. However, it makes the video long and boring. So instead of that, just follow this link in my YouTube video description and read the article because I explain everything in details in the article, which of course includes the description and explanation of the schematic in details. However, before I go to the PCB, let's check this part in the octo part. So the part is TL431 ACDB. So here is the octo part, TL431, AC, DB. So as it says, it's a part from Texas and the price is around 10 cents. Okay, let's check what is it. So adjustable and so and so, it's a shunt regulator, right? And here is the specification of the device or the chip in one page in front of your eyes. So the maximum output current is 100 milliamps, three pins, and the maximum output voltage is 36, and the minimum output voltage is 2.5. That's the point which we use in this circuit. Okay. And the tolerance is 1%. So it means the voltage accuracy of the voltage is 1% or the stability I can say. 
So it's a very nice website. You can also use this website to build your bill of materials or, or BOOM, B-O-M, for free. So the prices are also available and the schematic symbol, PCB footprint. Let's see how much is the price. So in the Mauser, for quantity of one is 42 cents and for two, quantity of 1,000, so that price was for the quantity of 1,000, so it's around 10 cents in the Mauser. So everything in front of your eyes, it's a very nice website, indeed. Anyway, let's go to the PCB. So here is the PCB layout. So as you can see, it's a two layers PCB board, and I have used a mixture of SMD and through-hole components to design this PCB. Let me show you the board size here. It says the horizontal size is 96 and the vertical size is 33. All right, I have followed some PCB design rules to design this PCB. The first one is these two creepage or isolation gap areas. I had to use or implement these areas to follow the IPC standard because the left side or here contains high voltage and non-isolated ground. However, the right side here contains low voltage and isolated ground. So these creepage areas are quite mandatory, especially this one below the optocoupler. So follow the same thing on your own design. The next point is these copper areas or copper planes. When we deal with high currents, although in this circuit, the maximum current is up to two and a half amps. However, it's a good practice that you use planes instead of tracks to carry high amount of current. This reduces the voltage drop and reduces the resistance of the pass. Also reduces the heat generation of the pass because the plane is much, uh, is much bigger than a track. Also, it's much, much more beautiful and easier to uh, draw in a PCB. The next point is grounding. If I show you the bottom layer and enable the single layer mode, you can see the bottom layer is almost a solid ground plane except for these tracks. So this helps to reduce the length of the ground pass and reduce the output noise. Two layers PCB board for this PCB and for this circuit is enough. However, if you design a complex board with a lot of high frequency or high speed circuits, at least you should use four layer board, four layer layers board and assign one layer totally just to ground. If you see the top layer, I have used some vias near the critical components and around critical areas. So for example, near the ground pin of the capacitors. Do you see that? Do you see these four wires near the ground pin of these capacitors? Also the near the ground pin of the USB connector. So all of these techniques are to reduce the length of the ground pass and the minimum benefit of such things is more stability better performance and lower output noise. I think I covered most of the points. Let's go to the next section and test the board. All right, welcome to the test bench. As you can see, I have prepared a basic test setup using this DC load and this oscilloscope. I keep the wires of this DC load using my left hand on the output of the power supply and you can see this LED lights up so it shows the power supply works correctly. The DC load draws 2 amps from the output so this is the maximum continuous current and the output voltage is 4.960. So the voltage drop is not more than 40 millivolts because if I disable the load you can see the output voltage is exactly 5, 5.00. Let me enable the load again. So around 40 or 50 millivolts maximum voltage drop. Another thing is that 
If you hear some audible noise in the background is because of the switching transformer because when you make the switching transformer by hand it's possible that some wires are loose or the ferrite core are a little bit loose and it makes some audible noise. This is not the case with commercial uh, transformer because they made the transformer by some devices, some automated devices and use some materials to keep the transformer stiff and uh, stable. That doesn't matter, it's just a little bit noise. My microphone is sensitive. Anyway, this test shows that the power supply works correctly, pretty stable and no problem whatsoever. In the next step, I will test the output noise using this oscilloscope. So stay tuned. All right, here is the oscilloscope screen. Let me show you the probe. This is the probe. As you can see, I have put a ground spring on the tip to minimize the environmental noises. The probe was set on times one and the bandwidth was limited to 20 megahertz. Now I put the probe on the output to show you the output noise under no load. So 4 millivolts peak to peak is the output noise of this power supply under no load. Now I ap uh, apply the 2 amps load to the output and put the probe on the output. Just a moment. There we go. This is the output noise of the power supply under the maximum load which is 2 amps. I believe uh, the noise is even lower than this. I mean 20 millivolts peak to peak. So the actual noise is lower than this because the probe absorbs some environmental noises from the switching transformer. Let me show you. This is the switching noise when I put the probe near the transformer. Of course, it does not happen when there is no load at the output, but when the transformer is under some pressure, the switching noise is more evident and more powerful. Let me show you that again. This is the output noise under the maximum load. So, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. See you in the next video.